YouTube, it's Chris, I'm back. Another quick video today. Today we're gonna to look at backing up our perfect operating system that we have tweaked. Okay, so say you've gone through um, all these guides and you've got Windows 100% exactly where you want it, but you really want a proper backup. So I, I'm gonna talk over that and sort of show you how to do that and give you my preference on how I like to do that. I highly recommend this for you all. It's just a generally really good idea to sort of, once you've got everything exactly how you like it on your system, you know, with all your programs and all your bits and pieces and all your files and Windows set up exactly how you like it. It's just a really good idea to sort of, once you've got it set up perfectly, have a complete backup. Um, and you know, this is gonna really help, you know, if anything happens down the line, uh, you get a virus or you have blue screen or you can't fix something 100%, uh, you've got a backup and it's just generally a great idea. So I'm gonna recommend this to all of you. The way Windows does things is generally like with a system restore and this is usually on by default but if you've been following my videos A to Z uh, we would have system restore off. I don't believe in system restore. I, I don't believe in it at all. I've had lots of problems with it in the past and bugs and generally I find if you go through a system restore it won't restore everything 100% especially if you've done a whole bunch of these tweaks and you follow through my videos. It will simply just not save it will do a restore but it will set a lot of settings back to the default and i really don't recommend it but i'll show you how to do that anyway and it's really really easy okay first thing we'll have to do is a windows key in r and if you've been following my uh, tweet guides list i will have to go to services dot msc okay we're gonna have to go down and find volume shadow copy okay because we've gone ahead and disabled this right so we're going to go ahead and set it to automatic apply and we'll start the service okay we've started that now okay what did it do that okay. anyway i was probably just too quick right um now we'll go to system and security okay system in the control panel um we'll go to advanced system settings all right we'll go over to system protection okay um, now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure so the system restore is turned on. Okay, uh, we'll configure it. Uh, make sure turn on system protection is on. Apply. Uh, max usage, I recommend at least probably 5% is probably a good idea. All right. Um, and yeah, for me, I'm going to delete all restore points on this drive, even though there isn't any. Okay. And hit apply there. So we've got that on. We've got that at least 5% and hit apply. That's great. Now we'll go ahead and we'll create a uh, system restore uh, point uh, just to sort of back everything up. Name it anything you want. I'll just call it backup. Press create. Going to create your restore point. And great, so that's done. Now, um, like I mentioned before, I really don't believe in a system restore point because it'll do the restore and it won't restore things back to how you originally had it. Say, for example, not necessarily but this but an example say you've gone ahead and you've done all these registry tweaks and you've unparked your cpu cores and you've got everything running 100 percent generally in my experience with system restore um it sort of will restore windows back to a sort of default state uh with a lot of those performance tweaks that we've done uh just simply uh not there anymore so it's just really not reliable so i li like to show you all the other methods that i like to use but for me i'm gonna go here and totally uh delete everything and turn this off and I'm going to go back into services I'm going to find volume shadow copy and I'm going to disable it because I don't believe in it and I don't want it on my system at all stop and disabled so like I said I don't believe in system restore um, another method um, which is quite good and a lot more reliable um, is a great program called a Cronus 2 image and I know a lot of IT sort of experts like to use it okay um, so if you go to Acronis, uh, the website here and links are going to be in the description, um, you know, sort of the, the new version is quite dear and I understand, um, if you didn't sort of want to go, um, through with it, that's totally fine. There are other options out there. Um, I've got this eBay link here and, um, it's pretty much the same thing for only, you know, um, the U S $4 and Australian $5. So, I mean, like that's, that's a really good sort of alternative to paying the full price. Um, so I'll show you how to use how I use a Cronus Im True Image right now. So while I've got a Cronus True Image um, downloading right now at a really stupid speed, um, yeah, thanks guys. Um, look, realistically, the the reason why I don't believe in System Restore uh, point is if your hard drive gets completely corrupted, um, or you know, lightning hits your house and you completely screw up your PC, um, you know, or just just something happens to your hard drive or you know your computer gets stolen. 
you're not going to be able to use system restore, are you? So ideally, the next two steps I'm going to be showing you is we're going to basically be backing up your whole, uh, you know, Windows boot drive on a complete other hard drive. So, and, and, you know, that'll be sort of stored somewhere else in your house, or I guess you could take it with you if you wanted to, but um, look, just ideally you want it that way. So, you know, if, you know, shit hits the fan, um, things go south, you've got that back up there and you can simply just unplug the current drive that you're using and plug that in and everything's exactly how you like it and, and that's the most ideal situation. All right, so now that we've got a Kronos Tube image uh, installed, um, what I'll get you to do is we'll open it. I'll show you all how to do that now. So obviously you'll have your um, other drive plugged in that you'd like to back up to. So all you do is go ahead and press tools, clone disk, okay. Um, I like to do the manual method, so we'll go manual, next, okay, here's where you choose your source disk. So for here, uh, my 950 Pro, um, that's where I've tweaked Windows 100% to where I like it and I want to back it up on another drive now. So that's the source disk, the one that we're using, the one that we want to back up. So that's selected, we'll click next. Okay, next one's the destination disk. Okay, so make sure you obviously select the right one if you've got other disks on your machine. Um, now, this is just a horrible hard drive that I had lying around that I used just to sort of show you all as an example. So you would click the destination disk that it will actually go and clone to. You'll click on that and then click next. It'll come up with a little warning just saying that it's going to delete all the petitions and everything on the drive. Go ahead and press OK. OK, um, now here's really, really cool. So both drives are completely different sizes. Um, and it will set it proportional um, for you, um, which is fantastic. So say you have like a um, 250 gig, uh, just like my drive, it's a 250 gig drive, and uh, I believe it's going to like a 300 gig drive. Now, if you cloned it um, in sort of the, with the docking station method, it wouldn't do it proportionally. So you would have to go into disk management and then go ahead and like extend that volume um, for that extra 50 gig. Um, if that sort of makes sense, but I'll, I'll show you that a little bit later when we get up to using the docking station method, okay? So proportional, that'll do it all for us, which is fantastic. And the great thing about um, doing it through a Chronos True image is you can clone to a smaller hard drive, whereas with uh, using the docking station method, you can't clone to a smaller hard drive, okay? We'll go and press next, proportional, it's going to do it all for us, okay? Then we just confirm, source disk is disk 1, yes, and the target disk is disk 2, yes. Fantastic. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to completely clone everything for us. So I'll go ahead and press proceed. And then it's going to do its thing. So once that's done, it will come up like with a little message saying all good. Um, and you know, you've got your um, your other drive cloned completely um, how you like it. Um, so sort of pro tip, what I like to do is um, I find with the Cronus True Image, it, it will install sort of a lot of bloatware and a lot of services um, that's really, really not ideal. So I'll show you sort of an example here. It'll just install all sorts of things like, uh, you know, Bonjour for Apple and God knows what else. And you just have a whole bunch of things running, which I really, really don't like. And I guess that's maybe why I prefer using the docking station method. But just look at all these services and, and things that are running. And like, I'm just really sort of unhappy with that. Now, what I'd like to do is... Um, you could go and uninstall them all one by one and I find um, generally there will be a whole bunch of um, files in like uh, program files so, so yeah like Bonjour, <laughs> Acronis and um, Bonjour is in here again for Apple why I don't know why. I'll also install in the program data folder which I don't like. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is um, ideally you sort of once you've used the software and the program you don't really want it running in the background and I don't like any of the extra features that they they have and they try to get you to use and I don't recommend them at all um, go ahead um, and you know boot from each drive individually um, go ahead and I'll link this in the description um, and go get the cleanup utility tool um, from um, a Chronos True image okay and you're going to want to run that and that'll basically just uninstall everything for you um, now, ideally for me personally, like I'll still check like the services and all the folders and I'll use auto runs and make sure nothing else is um, sort of um, still on there after using the cleanup tool. But uh, yeah, that's what I definitely recommend. So last but not least, uh, my preferred method is using the docking station. Okay. Um, and basically a docking station is a really, really handy, handy tool to have. 
Now, um, I just went down the road and, and bought uh, something like this. You probably preferably be able to get a cheaper one online or quite possibly a, maybe a better branded one. Um, and these things are just fantastic because you can um, read an external drive with a USB um, and you can also completely clone one drive to another, right? Um, now, you may have um, some issues, I guess, if you have an M2 drive um, and a lot of us have the new M2 drives now um, because they're a lot faster and whatnot. Um, you can sort of go on eBay and like I said, links are going to be in the description. Um, you can go get yourself sort of like a 2.5 inch SATA um, like adapter to their NVMe um, M2 drive, right? So basically what you would go ahead and do is you'd go put your um, M2 drive in here. You'd probably have to buy uh, two of these <laughs> uh, more than likely. And yeah, so you'd buy two of these, uh, put um, your M2 drive in here and your other M2 drive that you wanted as your backup. Um, in the other one and you'll just go ahead and use this dock so i'll show you a video here right and so that's of uh, me using the dock just as an example with uh, two hard drives you just go ahead and turn it on here a would be sort of the your, your main drive and b would be um, the drive that you're going to clone to all you need to do it's really really simple is you hold down the clone button okay so i'll be doing that shortly hold down the clone button and then it would just simply do the process and, and if you're using a solid state drive this will only take you know five to ten minutes if you're using sort of mechanical drive it'll take a little bit longer but it's really really simple so ideally um, my method um, that i recommend is using um, you know a docking station now um, there's one or two things with a docking station that you need to know um, your clone drive in um, a slot um, needs to be either the same size in B slot or like of a higher size. So for example, say I have um, a uh, 500 um, gigabyte um, boot drive, the drive that I want to back up completely. Um, and then I have maybe a 256 um, drive in the second one. It wouldn't be able to do it uh, using the docking station. You would simply need basically the same size drive um, or like a higher size. So yeah, ideally for me, um, Look, what I would do is I would go out and buy, uh, you know, me personally, I, I've got two um, M drives. I've got two Samsung uh, 950 Evos um, and sort of one is the one that I'm using right now. And the other one I've kind of got um, stored away in my drawer here, um, which has sort of everything totally backed up. Now, if you say you um, your main drive uh, that you're backing up, say is like a 250 gig, um, and then you've cloned that to something higher, say a 500 gig, one terabyte, two terabyte, no big deal, all you need to do, okay, um, say uh, you've um, backed up your 250 gig drive to your uh, 500 gig drive, um, and then you want to boot from that 500 gig drive, all you would need to do is go into disk management, so disk mgmt.msc, okay, just use this as an example okay and say um like this was our boot drive here it was the 500 gig boot drive what it would actually do is it would show only the 250 gig right there it wouldn't show the, the full amount um and to fix that all you need to do is right click and press extend volume okay and that basically would sort of open up and allow you to use the, the full drive and that's that's only if you've cloned a smaller drive sort of to a bigger drive so thanks for watching everyone, hope you found it helpful, I uh, highly recommend it and it's definitely a good idea to have a backup of your full system. Have a good one, cheers.